Hi guys, I just wanted to do a brief video because I had a few questions on elasticity and that is the main concept of what today is about. I did include it in your PowerPoint. So I have examples of inelastic items and elastic items in your PowerPoint. As I said on day one, sometimes the videos will be inside, same thing with the consumer choices. Sometimes they'll be inside the PowerPoint if I can find really good videos. If not, I'll record them myself. So. Let's talk a little bit more about elasticity and what it means. Elasticity is the measure of one variable in comparison with the other variable. Why I'm showing you this is because if you look back to our graphs that you've read over in the chapters that we talked about with law of supply and law of demand, what are the two variables? The two variables, it looks like this. We have price and quantity. So. This is kind of the same thing as we discussed in Law of Demand. When my price increases, my demand decreases. That is tracking the uh, cohesion, or I guess, or the reaction of this variable to this variable. So that's all elastic means, is that an elastic item says that I can stretch that price, and at a certain point you are going to find alternate items. Um, and this one becomes tricky because of our own personal preferences, our consumer choices. Inelastic means that I can push and pull those prices and stretch that price out and it's not going to give because I need these things. So elastic, examples of elastic items are things that are luxury items trips, um, preferences. And here again, it depends on your personal um, preferences on things, but it's about substitutions. Again, your book probably explains it a little bit better, but elasticity is measured by um, the reaction of your price moving up or down and what your demanded quantity is and how far you're going to go and find substitutes if my price raises too much. So let's look at some things. Let's just look at some things. So here, let's do inelastic first because inelastic items are a lot easier to define, I think. Inelastic things, things that my demand is not going to give, um, first are things that we really need. So this is gonna be things like prescriptions. If you are taking a, a life-saving drug or maybe a maintenance drug for diabetes or something like that, you need that. So if they raise the price all of a sudden, your drug is $10 a month. And I'm not talking about every scenario because there might be times when you can't afford it. But if they raise it from $10 to $20, you need it. So for the most part, you're going to stay with the item. So there are things like prescription. There are also things that we really kind of need. Um, and I guess that's the biggest way I can help define this or clarify it is it's based on need. So say you're baking a cake. Most people don't get too excited by going to the store and buying salt, um, sugar, those type of things. But those are all inelastic demand because they don't shift that much. And if you've ever done the grocery shopping in your household, you would know that salt has been pretty much stable prices since I've been alive. And that's from the 70s. I mean, you can go get Morton salt for the big blue cans, probably for $1.99. And maybe it's shifted a few cents here and there over the years, but not much because the demand is always gonna be there for it. Um, same thing with things like sugar, um, milk, bread, salt, pepper, all the basic things that we pretty much need. Um, where it gets ifish here is my elastic stuff is all the stuff that has many substitutes. So this would be in my case, it's not so much, but that's neither here nor there. I like Pepsi, right? 
So I go to the store, again, going to the grocery store, how many of you have looked for Pepsi? If you go to the grocery store, they probably have 722 different kinds of cola. So there's many substitutes. And if one week it's cheaper, I wouldn't substitute because I like Pepsi. So for me, sometimes some of these get like in a gray area because for me, there are certain things that no matter what the cost, I wouldn't change over. I would never drink top pop soda. Um, I like my Pepsi. But for the most part, we call them elastic. All your luxury items, because there's always substitutes here or there. Inelastic, again, things that we need. Gasoline, that's the hot topic one. Gasoline, a lot of people say, ah, this is elastic. Not really. It, actually, it's just the opposite. It's highly inelastic because of the fact that we need it, most of us. Yes, at a certain point in time, if it becomes over, like right now, it's really super cheap because we're in the middle of a pandemic. But for the average person, when it started getting into that 4 or $5, we started looking into alternative resources. What else can we do? Maybe you can ride a bike. Maybe you only live um, two blocks from work. So maybe you have alternatives to actually get to work. Um, maybe you can carpool, things like that. But for the most part, we need and depend upon gasoline. So when they spike the prices up to $3.50, $3.97, we're at their mercy because we're still going to buy gasoline. We might find it across the street, two cents cheaper, but we're most assured they're still going to buy gasoline. And where this also gets a little bit iffish, because we're talking about syntax, this class also, is cigarettes. Cigarettes, you might say, well, there's a lot of different choices in cigarettes. Yeah, but you still need cigarettes. And it becomes a need once you've actually become dependent upon them. And that is a drug. So it is literally you become dependent upon it. So it's more on the inelastic. So some of them are if-ish, but there's a lot of them that are not. Any kind of luxury food item, luxury travel, um, cars, things like that. Those are all elastic, but inelastic are things that we absolutely need beyond measure. And they're the basics. They're prescriptions. They are the basic staples that um, even if you needed that egg for, or the two eggs for your cake today, um, if you couldn't get to Walmart and you went down to the local shop and eggs have been the same price since, gosh, it's got to be at least 1985. They've been 90. You can always buy some for a dollar and 99 or 99 cents, dollar 29. They've all been relatively the same price. But if I go and shop at my local 7 Eleven, I guarantee you I can pick up a dozen eggs. They'll probably be $3, but I need them for that cake, so I'm going to pay that money. So they become inelastic, all of our basic staples. So hopefully that helps. Again, go back and look in your PowerPoint and your chapters, plus look on the internet. List of inelastic items, list of elastic items. There are hundreds upon hundreds. And again, sometimes it's a little iffish because sometimes it depends on your personal preferences. Um, again, in addition to Pepsi, things like cheese, um, people have brand preferences and those brand preferences you're not willing to push or pull um i i like heinz ketchup heinz ketchup is an inelastic item for me it would be typically for most people elastic but i'm not eating um all these special ketchup it tastes like tomato paste to me so for me it's inelastic so if you're going to throw something on the list that maybe is either or just let me know why you deem it as elastic or inelastic because it can shift. But that is the difference between elastic. Elastic is not a need item and has many, many, many substitutes. If they push that price too much, I will go and find something else to replace it. Inelastic means it's really not replaceable. It can be replaced by brand to brand, sure, but for the most part, it's your basic staples, salt, pepper, milk, bread, um, gasoline, things like that. Thanks.
See you guys later. Bye guys.